Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the RAG Diabetes webinar on exercise and diabetes by Professor Kennedy. So this is our fourth webinar for the RAG Diabetes Challenge, which is a three month challenge for uh, having a healthy lifestyle and managing diabetes. So let me take this opportunity to welcome all of you and introduce the speaker of the day, that is Professor Edwin Kennedy. Uh, so Professor Edwin Kennedy is a multifaceted person in academics. He has a degree in business, law, and a PhD in health studies from the USA. He was a founder director of Harvard Institute uh, of Lifestyle Medicine and has been hailed by Harvard Medical School USA as a pioneer in lifestyle medicine. In his college years from 1965 to 73, he was the national champion of India in the 100 and 200 meters and an Asian champion in athletics. He was a member of the team that swam the English Channel from England to France. He has trekked in the Himalayas and is a black belt and karate instructor. He was a member of the committee that organized the Asian and the Commonwealth Games in India. In corporate life from 1973 till 1990, he was the director executive of Tata Steel, where he received the Government of India uh, Award for the Sports Management. As managing director of Apollo Life from 1990 till 2012, he pioneered the corporate health in India as chief wellness officer at Rack Hospital Group from 2012 till date. He has received several awards, including Best Healthcare Research. Uh, in UAE, best wellness company in GCC, etc. So uh, uh, I take this opportunity to thank and welcome Professor Professor Adrian Kennedy to start and continue with this webinar today. I'm going to try and share my screen, okay? Now, Neha, after I share screen, what is my next step? Dr. W? Uh, yes. After I share screen, I get down to... So uh, have you opened your uh, presentation? Yes, I've done that. So I go down here, I open this up, and then I go to my presentation. Yes, I've got that there, and then I open it full, and then I There I am. All clear. I'm sorry for that little. Uh, uh, yes, sir. I'm sorry for that little mix-up in a matter of speaking. Uh, Saloni, are you managing the slides, or am I doing it from here? I'll manage the slides for you, Professor. Okay. Okay. Friends, my my apologies. Uh, the vagaries of age. Unfortunately, technology has moved on, uh, and I have not kept pace. However, I will try uh, to make up by uh, the information that I provide. So a topic, uh, the topic provided to me was uh, exercise in diabetes. Now you, you, you can name this in many different ways. Is it exercise in diabetes? Uh, what is the benefit of that? Or is it exercise for diabetics? How will they benefit from it? Or is it exercise and diabetes? What are the exercises individuals who have diabetes do, et cetera, et cetera? I will cover all these broad perspectives by talking about the benefits of exercise, the specific benefits to uh, uh, individuals who have high blood sugar, uh, how these individuals can keep fit, keeping in mind the safety parameters of hypoglycemia. Uh, I will talk about the risk alleviation, which means the benefit of exercise to the comorbidities that associate with diabetes, and that in, could include uh, hypertension, 
uh, hypercholesteremia. It could include cardiac ailments and so on. Uh, the next slide, please. Now, I mentioned this earlier, but I will mention specifically the components of exercise. The benefits of exercise I will talk about in a minute. Can we have the next slide, please? Now, these are the benefits of exercise. Now, these benefits of exercise are common to all individuals across the spectrum. There are very few individuals, whether you are ill or whether you are not ill, whether you are sick, whether you are old or young, or whether you're male or female, uh, exercise seems to be the single magic pill that can benefit almost every need. So including, of course, in this instance, specifically our colleagues who have high blood sugar. So what are these benefits? The first benefit of exercise is in reversing muscular debility. Now, what do we mean by this? What we mean is that as we grow older, your muscles tend to reduce their functional capacity, which is strength and flexibility by and large. They reduce their capacity at the rate of approximately 1% per year, which means if you apex your muscular capacity at age 20, then from the age of 20 onwards, you will reduce your strength, flexibility, speed and other such physical aspects at the rate of 1% per year. So by the time you are 60 years old, you will have reduced your functional capacity by 40%. Now that is why older individuals are less capable than younger individuals. So what does exercise do? Exercise reverses this situation. By strengthening your muscles, it, reduce, it improves its capacity rather than reduces its capacity. So you can be absolutely physically fit, almost as good as a youngster, at any rate, 20 years younger than you are by doing exercise. So exercise reverses muscular debility. Now we do know that as we get older, not only do we lose balance, but we also lose the strength of our bones. When you are young and you fall, you would probably recover very quickly with a few scrapes. But when you're older and you fall, you tend to break your bones. And this breaking of bones can be debilating simply because the bone does not repair in old age as well as it would when you were young. Now, this is called osteoporosis the thinning of the bones or the weakening of the bone. Now, when you exercise, you load the bone, and as a consequence, you strengthen the bone. And therefore, if you fall when you, if, and you are exercising, or if you are an exerciser in older age and you fall, you will not break your bone, simply because your bone is much stronger at your age. Than it, than it would normally be if you did not exercise. Now, as you get older, or, and when I say older, I mean anything beyond the age of 35, the body's capacity begins to reduce around that time. It reduces its physical and sometimes even mental capacity. So at that point of time, over the years, you tend to reduce your joint mobility. Exercise keeps that joint mobility fluid because of the activation of the joint and the synovial fluid within the joints. Now, when you exercise, it improves the circulation. That circulation goes up to the brain and it has its own beneficial impact in reducing stress, reducing psychosomatic ailments, reducing anxiety, reducing depression, which means that exercise has the capacity to improve circulation to the brain on the one hand, it also 
increases the endorphin release on the other hand and has a profound effect on your mental well-being. So exercise is not only beneficial physically, exercise is also be uh, beneficial to the brain and to your mind. Now, obviously, when you exercise, you will burn calories. The calories that you get from the food that you eat. Now, when you exercise for an hour a day, it burns up one entire meal, which means that if you exercise for one hour, you have eradicated and utilized 500 calories, which is the worth of one meal. And therefore, it reduces obesity. When you exercise, the heart rate goes up. It strengthens the heart muscle. When you exercise, the arteries open up. When the artery open, opens up, it expands due to the peristalsis movement of the heart or the pumping of blood into the arteries. It expands, it reduces blood pressure. When you exercise, it increases respiration. This is because of the extra energy and oxygen needs of the body. And therefore, it improves your lung capacity. It purifies your blood. Now, for energy, exercise would utilize sugar if it is a speedy and powerful movement. But if it's a long-term movement, such as running for an hour or so, or running for more than half an hour, or exercising for more than half an hour, it would burn fat as fuel. But prior to that, it will burn sugar as fuel. And therefore, exercise reduces blood sugar, exercise reduces cholesterol. And exercise, of course, improves the quality of life. And it also, as a consequence, improves the length of life. Now, let's talk about the next slide. Now, the next slide is specific to the benefits of exercise in diabetes. Understanding, first of all, what is the functional, what is the functioning of the ins of insulin uh, in diabetes, right. and what is the impact? How can we reverse this? Now, Insulin uh, in diabetes, diabetes results in or is defined as poor insulin transference of glucose. Insulin converts glucose into energy, broadly speaking, in a simple manner. Now, I'm not a doctor, so my explanation tends to be simplistic. But in my understanding, insulin is utilized for the conversion automatically utilizes itself for the conversion of sugar into energy. Now, if this is not functioning and the energy is not being utilized, the residual sugar remains in the bloodstream and also remains as a consequence within the organs of the body, the liver, the kidney, and all such organs of the body are impacted by having excess sugar or glucose within their capillaries. Now, if this is the situation, it results in a breakdown of the body in several ways, including uh, renal disease, including retinopathy or eye-related diseases, including cardiac ailments. Many of the organs tend to uh, dysfunction as a consequence of this situation. Now, what is the benefit of exercise? Amazingly, exercise has a simple, straightforward benefit. Due to the muscular contraction, the muscle draws, due to the muscular contraction, the muscle requires energy. Now, this energy is within the muscle, within in the glucose. Now, when the muscle contracts and is utilized, it automatically utilizes glucose as energy and therefore reactivates the entire cycle, which means when you exercise, you utilize the energy in the cells of the body, in the cells of the muscle. When that energy is utilized, it has the, the glucose 
has to be replaced. It is replaced from the bloodstream or replaced from within the organs. Therefore, simply speaking, I see exercise as a support system for insulin. So exercise burns sugar and increases the activation of energy and glucose in the body and therefore reduces or benefits diabetes. The next slide, please. Now, if exercise is so beneficial to the body in its entirety, and if exercise is beneficial to diabetic individuals in the support of the insulin mechanism, well then, how do we exercise? Exercise comprises of a few simple, a few simple protocols. In this instance, exercise is a physical activity. But remember, as far as the brain is concerned, exercise can be a mental activity, which means that exercise can be both physical as well as mental. But in this instance, we are talking about exercise as a physical activity. So exercise is a physical activity. It comprises of enhancing the body's stamina, which is cardiorespiratory, heart and lungs. It improves the muscular strength, which is the muscles of the body, of which there are 600. It improves the flexibility, which is the tendons, the ligaments, and the joints of the body. There are 10 large joints. Well, if you look at the vertebrae, the vertebrae itself has over 32 or 33 joints. But taking that as a single, uh, uh, as a single product, as a single item, the rest of the joints of the body, there are about 10 or 12 major joints, are all improved through exercise. And of course, exercise is not simply a matter of uh, going to the gym or going for a walk or any such thing. You could play games like football or cricket or hockey or basketball or swim. All these are exercises. So exercise, the components of an exercise or a fitness program is physical activity. It, the program must have stamina, which will increase your heart rate and improve your, your lung capacity. It should give you muscular strength. It should give mobility to the joints and flexibility to the muscles. And of course, it will enhance your skills. The next slide, please. So let's talk about the activity and the stamina component. Now, many people ask the question, like housewives, for example, that I am physically active through the day. I am sweeping, oh well, that doesn't exist anymore. I think we now have a vacuum cleaner to do that. But still, they would say that I clean the house, I cook the food, I'm moving from room to room. I have a lot of activity. So isn't this activity exercise? Now, it is exercise without a doubt. It's referred to as functional exercises or lifestyle exercise. It is exercise without a doubt. But the capacity or the quantum of activity is vitally important in terms of giving the body benefit. So you need to have at least four hours of physical activity, which involves movement, bending, lifting, and carrying. And as we've researched and found out that the modern day individual has very little physical activity. You will be amazed at the very low frequencies of physical activity of an office worker. 
It is less than walking one kilometer. And the body requires at least seven to 10 kilometers of distance or 7,000 to 10,000 steps of walking or at least 30 to 60 minutes of such intense continuous activity to get a benefit. So I would like to say that lifestyle activity may supplement an exercise program, but should not be considered as the sole activity in terms of improving fitness. So then we talk in terms of an exercise program. Now, the benefit of modern exercise programs is that they have encapsulated the entire activities day or the entire exercise schedule into three major components, stamina, strength, and flexibility. Now, stamina is any activity that increases the heart rate and makes you breathe more. Now, while, you, while I'm sitting and talking with you, my heart rate would be 72 beats a minute. If I were to exercise, my heart rate will double to 140 beats a minute. That is the benefit of exercise. When you double the heart rate, you find that the heart muscle becomes strong, but there's a caveat over here. The caveat is that if you are young, doubling the heart rate is more than essential. But if you get older, your exercises must be in moderation, meaning that your exercise should be such that you are perfectly capable of breathing and moving in a normal way. So exercise is a social activity, which means that you must never exercise alone. Always exercise with a friend or colleague or a family member when you, where you can continue a conversation. If you find that you cannot continue a conversation while you are exercising, it means that the intensity of the exercise is too high, your heart rate is too high, and this exercise is incompatible for your current levels of fitness. So I would then prefer that you slow down. This is referred to as the talk test. Or another way to present it, exercise in moderation is better than exercise with intensity if you are simply looking at being physically fit. If you are young and want to be competitive, like I was when I was a youngster, you want to be competitive at the world stage to win a medal in a world class or a nation level competition or a Middle East or a GCC competition or even in a UAE competition. Well, if that is the case, intense activity is essential. And I'm sure that your age would be less than 30 under those circumstances. The next slide, please. Walking, jogging, cycling, swimming, are exercises for stamina. They increase the heart rate, they improve the respiration. Stamina is walking, jogging, cycling, swimming, and games, football, hockey, cricket, anything that makes you run, anything that increases your heart rate is stamina. The second component of, or component of exercise is strength. You can see this young lady with her son on her shoulder, and she's just squatting, bending her knees, and going up again. Now, this movement will strengthen her back, strengthen her spine, strengthen her legs, all of it, and give her a sense of balance. And of course, we can't forget the love and affection between mother and child. So, if you want to strengthen your muscles, there are two types. One is calisthenics, where you use your own body weight. And I'll explain this to you. And the second is weight training, where you use an external weight to strengthen the muscle. Younger individuals should do weight training to strengthen the muscles. Older individuals should do weight training to maintain their muscles. 
but of course using a lighter weight, and we will discuss that. Calisthenics is exercises that you can do at home when you are traveling, you're unable to get to a gym where you use your own body weight. But remember, if you wish to strengthen your muscles, then you have to look at the body as comprising of five or six muscle groups. One muscle group will be the, uh, the shoulder, taking the body from the top, the shoulder, the arms, the chest, the abdomen, the back, the legs, the thighs, and the calf. These are your muscle groups. And then go ahead and do exercises for each of these groups. Now, the next slide will show you a few calisthenic movements. Now, these are calisthenic exercises, which would mean that these are exercises you will see the push up will strengthen the arms and the shoulder. Look at the bottom slide, the bottom push up. It shows you the top position and the bottom position. Repeat that 10 times and you will have strong arms, shoulders and a chest. Then you have the sit up, the modified sit up or the sit up, the abdominal sit up as you can see. The modified push up and the modified sit up are for older individuals. The sit up for the abdominal is for younger individuals. 10 repetitions is all you require of this movement. 10 repetitions. If you log on to the website, all these are shown in a video. So log on to uh, ragdiabeteschallenge.com and you will find all these exercises on the website. And then you have same muscles for strengthening the calf and the thigh. Now this slide, uh, which Neha has presented, uh, is for strengthening the muscles, utilizing an external weight. So you have a barbell over here, which is loaded with the weight. And usually, uh, if you wish to evaluate your strength, when you use the upper body, which is using the arms, the strength should be half, the, the weight should be half of your body weight. So if I'm 80 kgs, I should be able to lift 40 kgs with this upper arm movement. And that would be the shoulder press, the bench press uh, for the chest, the curl for the arm, and the calf raise and the half squat is for the lower body, in which you will use equivalent of your body weight. So if my body weight is 80 kgs, I should be able to carry an additional 80 kgs. Yeah, and of course, for the uh, abdomen and the back, we don't normally use weights because it would uh, stress the spine. And so we use the calisthenic movement such as the back lift and the sit up. Now the next slide will show you the use of lighter weights. So these are completely light weights and these are about 10 kgs, very, very beneficial for ladies. About 10, five or 10, 10 kgs would perhaps be too much. A 2.5 or a five kg weight with these movements, as you can see for the arms, the, the waist, uh, the shoulder, the legs, etc., cetera, uh, would be very helpful. So a light weight of 2.5 kgs uh, with each individual arm is, is perfect for ladies. Yes. Now, we've spoken about a gym. And when you go to a gym, it's, it, it, it's an excellent location to be. And I must tell you that I would recommend that everyone, irrespective of age, uh, and I mean irrespective of age up to the age of about 80 or 85, irrespective of age, should go to the gym at least twice a week. Youngsters may go three times or more, but older individuals, including myself, should go to the gym at least two times a week. Now, your, your gym trainer will give you many different forms of exercises. And, uh, you know, um, they're all very advanced, but they are simple enough to do. The conventional system uh, is where you simply do three sets of an exercise. The circuit system is where you do all the exercises together, one after the other. So I do a shoulder press, and then I would do 
uh, a bench press and then I would do an abdomen and then I would do a squat and then I would circle back to uh, repeat that cycle. So that's a circle system. A split system is where you do the upper body, uh, that would be the arms, shoulders and chest one day and the lower body the next day. Now, I, I, I'm not going to explain this too much because this is really for advanced exercise individual. But for people like you and me who are exercising for diabetes or who are exercising to stay fit, you need simply stay with the conventional system. Go to the gym, take advice from your trainer. Please do not attempt to do exercise in a gym without your trainer's support. And simply do 10 repetitions of any exercise, the shoulder press or the curl or the bench press, any of these movements, do 10 repetitions of each into one set. If you are above the age of 50, one set would be 10. Uh, if you're 40 to 50, two sets, that would be 20. And if you're below the age of 40, three sets, which would be 30 movements, of a single exercise broken up into 10 rest, 10 rest, 10 rest. And the rest in between is only to catch your breath. It, it, it would be for about a minute or two, not more than that. But then, uh, why am I giving you this advice? You can just as well go to the gym and get this information from your gym trainer. Yes, the next slide, please. Mobility. Now, the unique thing about mobility is that there are two methods of mobility. One is dynamic, which is the Western method, and the other is static, which is the Eastern method or the Yogasana method. So there are two ways, and there are many more ways. If you look at the Orientals, well, then you have Tai Chi and Kung Fu and Chi Kung. These are various methods uh, of uh, of exercise from different parts of the world, okay? But let us consider uh, some well-known simple exercise systems, such as yoga starts and calisthenics or joint mobility in this instance. So as far as mobility is concerned, the objective is to move the joints. Now, which are the joints? As far as the muscles are concerned, the strength will give you shoulder, chest, back, abdomen, thigh, and calf. Those are the muscles for strength. Now, when it comes to mobility, you look at the neck joint, the cervical area, the shoulder, the elbows, the wrist, the fingers, the waist, the hip the knee, the ankle and the foot. These are your joints and flexibility covers these joints, okay? But there is another type and that is yoga. And yoga is unique because it doesn't have a dynamic movement or a repetitive movement, but we will talk about yoga in a minute. Let's first talk about joint mobility and calisthenics. Yes. Here you are. Neck rotation, shoulder rotation, wrist rotation, elbow bends, waist rotation, toe touch. You cannot miss it. It is so simple. And all you have to do is 10 movements of each. That is all. Now look at the benefit to the diabetic. When you do strength for diabetes, it pulls the insulin into the muscle to release the glycogen energy. So that is so valuable. Now, when you do mobility, the movement itself results in the drawing of insulin for energy. And of course, the subsidiary benefit or the primary benefit is the re release of the synovial fluids to keep your joints absolutely mobile and flexible. As you get older, you tend to be arthritic. Your joints tend to be difficult to move. So these movements 
10 repetitions, just 10 repetitions is all you need. 10 repetitions of each neck, shoulder, wrist, joint, knee, ankle, etc. And that is good enough. It will not take more than five minutes a day. The next slide, please. Well, these are a few more mobility exercises. Let's move on to the next slide. And now we come to yoga. So why should we talk about yoga? We must talk about yoga when we talk exercise simply because it is the reverse of the Western philosophy. While the Western philosophy emphasizes, as I have done, it emphasizes muscles, it emphasizes joints, it emphasizes the external skeleton. Yoga internalizes. The Ardhalasana, for example, as you can see, will take care of the inter entire reproductive system. The Sarvangasana, as you can see, will take care of the entire neurological system. The Halasana, the Bhujagasana, will manage the spine. The Halasana is very sim similar to the Sarvangasana. The Dharu, Dharu, Dhanurusana, the Dhanurasana, the Salabhasana. I mean, these are phenomenal movements. And you just have to hold that movement for a second. Let me show you the next slide. Now, the same asanas that you saw will now show you the benefits. The Ardhalasana, the internalization of the reproductive system. The sarvagasa, the brain, the nervous system, the thyroid, circulatory system, the harasana, the spine, the nervous system, lungs. You have profound benefits from yoga. Yoga internalizes. Yoga, if I may say so, is an exercise for the individuals who do not have the vitality and capacity of youth. It is easy to do. And it is so beneficial. It massages the entire internal system. And the very massaging of the liver will result in the release of energy. The very massaging of the kidneys will result in the release of glucose, the conversion of glucose into energy in that organ system. These are so beneficial. Later in the series, we will give you a separate uh, uh, session on yoga and diabetes. You must sit in on that one. Yes, the next slide, please. Well, these are more yog yogasanas. The only thing I would like to point out over here is, please look at the Shavasana and the Anulom Vilom. The Shavasana is the epitome of yoga. It is relaxation. Yoga is a simple exercise in which you do one or two movements, hold the position, and between each movement, since the heart rate will go up to 120 or 130 during the movement, between each movement, you do the Shavasana or the corpse pose, or you just lie down and breathe lightly. It brings the heart rate back to 90 beats a minute. So, and in Western exercises, this is only done at the end of the exercise session. In yoga, it is done between each exercise. You can see the profound difference and the profound benefits, especially in relevance of age. Now, Anulom Vilom is an interesting, or uh, the entire Pranayama series is an interesting concept in yoga for the simple reason that in Western exercises, there is a reactive breathing due to the need of oxygen and due to the utilization of glycogen or glucose or sugar, as the case may be. In yoga, you are breathing automatically. You are taught how to breathe in the different systems, the Anulom Vilam, the Bastrika, the Kapalbhati, and all these different systems of breathing. And that automatically supplies the energy to the body without an increased heart rate. 
So it is a profound method of, of exercise. The next step, please. Okay, I mentioned the benefits so we can move on. Okay, so when we spoke about the components of an exercise program, we said in this instance, activity is physical, but mental activity is also an exercise, but still we're now talking physical. We spoke about activity. We spoke about strength for the muscles. We spoke about stamina for the heart and lung. We spoke about mobility and flexibility for the joints. And we spoke about the exercise systems. Now, those exercise systems could be weight training. They could be calisthenics. They could be mobility exercises. They could be yoga. They could be tai chi. They could be any of these exercise systems. They could be the Alexander technique. They could be Pilates. It could be any of these systems. But here, you can see on your screen something called skill and sport. Now, as far as sport is concerned, it is a competitive event for young individuals. There's the Olympics and the non-Olympic non sports. There are recreational and competitive sports. There are racket games like badminton, shuttle, and tennis. There are ball games like football and volleyball and water polo. Similarly, there are, there are water games. And there is martial arts like, well, I would call it, uh, there are defensive uh, techniques such as boxing and wrestling and karate. Now, these are skill sets for which you have to be fit. So you are fit for sport. You cannot play sport to be fit. Please understand this. You have to be fit in order to participate in sports. You cannot use sports as a means of getting fit. It will result in injury. Okay. Yes, the next slide, please. Okay. Now, remember, I said it will result in injury. So keep that word injury in mind. Keep that word injury in mind. And then look at how you can get fit. The word fit is frequency, intensity, and time. Frequency, intensity, and time. And of course, if you wish to add, you can add many things. You can add type of fitness. So frequency. Frequency is six days a week. You sleep every day. You eat your food two or three times a day. Exercise is a daily activity. You must devote at least a half hour to one hour. Now, if you were to go with the American Academy of Exercise or the American Academy of Physicians or uh, the European Council, they have all defined through research that the minimum exercise for an individual is 30 minutes a day six to seven days a week, I would prefer six. Or intense exercise, one hour a day, three days a week. Now, what is intense and what is moderate depends on your capacity. But a simple statement from an old man would be, please exercise every day if you are older, 30 minutes is fine. If you are younger, an hour a day is excellent. But every day, intensity, as I mentioned to you, moderate. Keep in mind the talking test for the older individuals above 40. Exercise is a social activity. You must have the ability to communicate during exercise. And for safety reasons, exercise in groups. As far as time is concerned, I mentioned 30 to 60 uh, minutes a day. Do you exercise in the morning or do you exercise in the evening? Well, 
there are two or three ways to look at this. If your exercise is moderate, exercise in the morning, yoga, etc., would go in the morning. If your exercise is moderate, exercise in the morning. If your exercise is intense, weight training, sports and games, exercise in the evening. For the simple reason that when you get up in the morning, your heart rate is low at 60 to 70 beats a minute. And when you exercise in the evening, your heart rate is high at about 80 to 90 beats a minute. But you may exercise according to your convenience. Yes, can we see the next slide, please? So, if you wish to exercise, keep in mind, exercise every day, 30 to 60 minutes a day, moderation for younger, older individuals, intensity for older individuals. Uh, intensity for younger individuals, moderation for older individuals. Now, are there any specific guidelines for diabetics? Yes. The word is hypoglycemia. Diabetics take medicine. That medicine reduces blood sugar. Reduced blood sugar will result in feeling weak, giddy, disoriented. Now, if you feel those things, it means you should not be exercising. So, if you are diabetic, step one, as in all exercise, do not exercise without your doctor's approval if you are a non-exerciser and above the age of 35. Two, if you are diabetic, please ensure that in when you start out, you check your blood sugar level. If it is less than 100, then please eat a banana, have half a uh, glass of fruit juice, a slice of bread, perhaps anything that increases your calories by about 100 calories to take you through your entire exercise session and start the program. A mild snack. As a matter of fact, I would say that for diabetics, I personally recommend do not exercise without having a small snack before exercising. That way you will avoid hypoglycemia. What is hypoglycemia? the reduction of blood sugar levels to the point where there is no energy releasable by the body for utilization, for the activity concern. Okay, now, if you are diabetic and taking medication, which you are, which most of us are, you could even take, be taking insulin. Please consult your doctor on when to exercise. My best advice to you is if you're on medication, please take your medication after exercise and not before exercise. Diabetics, before you exercise, have a small snack. After you exercise, please take your medication. If you do not have a snack and you take your medication and you exercise, you could suffer from hypoglycemia you will feel weak, giddy, disoriented, and you would not be able to exercise. And if you feel that way, no exercise for the rest of the day, please. Next slide, please. Uh, friends, I will finish in less than five minutes. Uh, safety suggestions, I've mentioned it for diabetics. For the rest of us, including my colleagues who have diabetes, check with your doctor before you exercise, please. <laughs> especially if you're on medication, start the exercise gradually at five minutes, five minutes a day for the first week, 10 minutes a day for the second week, 20 minutes, double everything, 20 minutes a day for the third week, 40 minutes a day for the fourth week. And after that, you are an exerciser. 10 minutes for the first week, 20 minutes, second week, 30 minutes, third week, 40 minutes, fourth week. And after that, you are a normal exerciser. Exercise in moderation, remember the top test. Exercise with colleagues and friends for safety reasons. Start your exercise gradually. Cool down at the end of exercise. Soon after you do your exercise, relax for a few minutes. Do your deep breathing. Bring your heart rate back to 90 and then go on with the rest of your, of your day's activities. Watch out for dehydration. Drink a glass of water prior to, even during exercise. 
Hypothermia, if it is very cold, please ensure that you wear warm clothes. If you are diabetic, please avoid hypoglycemia. By the suggestions I gave you earlier. The next slide, please. Moderation versus intensity. I am a great believer in moderation. If you are a competing spokesman, go for intensity. If you are just trying to keep fit, go for moderation. In moderation, exercise is enjoyable. It improves your health. It reduces body fat. It burns fat as fuel. Not intense activity, which burns sugar as fuel. It decreases hunger. It stimulates the immune system. It improves the mind and it retards aiding aging. I remember the first book I wrote at the end of it all, there was this little line over there. I am searching for the secret of eternal youth. And I now realize what that is 60 years later. And that is exercise amongst other things, exercise. Now, for the individuals who are competitive and are really not part of this, exercise is for comp competition. It improves fitness. It does not improve health. There is a difference between fitness and health. It improves fitness. It reduces, uh, it burns sugar instead of burning fat. It increases hunger. It weakens the immune system. That is why sportsmen retire early. It impacts your health. So, unless you're being paid a million dollars to compete, moderation and exercise is perhaps the better idea. Now, the next slide, please. Exercises are not only meant for fit young people. Exercises are not only meant for individuals who are not ill. Exercises are therapeutic. Exercises are rehabilitative. Cardiac, neuro. I mean, you, for cardiac exercise, physical activity is a great thing. For neuro exercises, mental activity is a great thing. The management of stress, the management of anxiety, the management of depression. And these days, Parkinson's and uh, dementia are a major problem. I have a colleague who's a psychologist who uh, swears by exercise for the benefit of the mind. And then you have uh, uh, benefits to the joints and arthritis, benefits in the reduction of old age. Children, children have to exercise. I mean, children must eat for sure, but children must exercise for sure. And everything that I have said for adults is double for children. Feed them twice as much, make them exercise twice as much. Two hours of exercise a day is not too little for a child. But remember the joy of activity. Let them play the games they like to play. And I'm telling you this, I am an experienced grandfather with a six-year-old and a four-year-old, and I take them out for their exercise every day, and I am the greatest beneficiary. The next slide, please. Here you are, the biggest killer in the world, the heart attack. The biggest killer in the world. Exercise reduces heart rate, reduces blood pressure, utilizes sugar, and uh, uh, reverts diabetes, reduces cholesterol, improves high-density cholesterol, or converts bad cholesterol into good cholesterol, utilizes food, energy, and calories, reduces the stress hormone, purifies the blood, strengthens the lung, strengthens the heart, reverses a genetic profile. This is epigenetics. If your father's had a heart attack, you can reverse your genetics by exercising, that is epigenetics, changing your genetics by your daily activity. And exercise is a great beneficiary for that. And the next and the last slide, please. Oh, yes, and that is a thank you slide. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my apologies. Uh, I believe I was to speak for 45 minutes. I have spoken for 50, my up uh, for 50 or 55. My apologies, especially to Dr. Wilkie. No worries, sir. It was a wonderful presentation. And 
many people have many queries and this session was very short in that term we need more time to be more specific on the things uh, i will take many questions first question is being asked which we generally uh, come across her sir is asking there are many concept of exercises and timing that are suggested you know internet is uh, plenty of all of that what is the best exercise for diabetic patients what is your suggestion professor this is a very common question and everyone asks for this so your question is what is the best time and what is the best exercise what is the best exercise the best exercise friends there is no such thing as a best exercise there is only such a thing called exercise please understand this <coughs> exercise comprises of strength stamina and flexibility so you have to have all three things in an exercise program you you may want me to tell you that going for a walk is good and i will say please go for a walk but at the end of that walk if you do your flexibility and strength movements that walk becomes more enhanced now let's look at it from a diabetes perspective so in diabetes what are you trying to do you you are trying to reduce body weight without a doubt well if you say that you want to reduce body weight any increased exercise activity including walking and perhaps walking best of all is going to burn your calories and help you to reduce weight that is true but you also want to do strength exercises to to improve the uh, to improve the metabolism of each muscle so therefore my own belief is that for exercise i'll answer your question very simply as far as diabetics are concerned i would recommend please go for a walk that is a good exercise finish your walk by doing some strength and flexibility movements that is good i would also advise you if you are able to do yoga do yoga 3 days a week walk 3 days a week do yoga 3 days a week if you are doing gym training i would advise you please go for your walk or jog 3 days a week and do your gym training 3 days a week so the choice is yours any exercise is good for you there is no single best exercise for diabetes the exercise that you like best is good for you i would like to answer that question that way sir yeah that was a perfect answer sir uh, because there is no such uh, specific exercise for diabetes but all components have to be covered that will give a proper exercise uh, format for a diabetic patient uh, sir second question is from manpreet my husband is diabetic and has arthritis of knees what exercise he should follow is it safe to exercise i would like to add the second question by dr veena role of anti gravity exercises in diabetes i think you can merge uh, these two or uh, se separately you can answer this first question is my husband is diabetic and has arthritis of knees what exercise he should follow and is it safe to exercise professor is it audible professor is it audible i think yes it's not... audible we can hear you professor i think we lost connection with professor yeah i don't see him online yeah i think there is a lot of pressure over there so you would want to take some questions dr wilko just give give me a minute if he is not able to connect then we will take it forward uh just a second just a second yeah uh, manpreet has asked my husband is diabetic and has arthritis of knees what exercise he should follow and is it safe to exercise yes definitely it is safe to exercise but if your uh, arthritis of knees is evaluated by your doctor if it is worse then exercise should be very moderate 
especially the uh, second question what uh, dr veena has asked anti gravity exercises like swimming is the best exercise for this this will help uh, to uh, means control the uh, damage to the arthritic knees as well as uh, will give you benefit for the exercise of diabetes and burn calories also there are other uh, anti gravity exercises like hydrotherapy hydro exercises are there uh, doing exercise in the swimming pool uh, doing the exercises on the uh, this uh, hydrotherapy tubs these are very good exercises uh, which you can do uh, without having load on your body full exercise full muscle uh, flexibility will be there and still it will be good for your uh, diabetes next question i will take how long should we walk on treadmill for a physical fitness what should be the speed and inclination on treadmill for people between 43 to 47 age group this is being asked by parampreet yes uh, treadmill is very good for exercise it all depends how much uh, weight you have what is the bmi if you are very grossly obese then it will be uh, difficult for you to walk on treadmill especially on the inclinations if you are uh, if your bmi is well within the 27 below 27 then it's good if you are diabetic you can do the exercise on treadmill for minimum 20 to 30 minutes with uh, increase in the speed slowing down the speed but don't push yourself on the inclinations more if your bmi is more than 27 because that will uh, give you a hurt to your knees as well as your heels also there is no specific timing uh, for uh, treadmill as specific but definitely 20 minutes minimum of treadmill uh, doing a treadmill exercise is good so i think these are the questions we will take uh, one more question professor was mentioning about this this is also a question we come across uh, many times professor has mentioned about the yoga is very good for diabetes what yoga asanas are good for diabetes there are few yoga uh, yoga asanas which we uh, say as uh, dhanurasana then kapalbhati then uh, halasana these are very good exercises as uh, yoga for diabetic patients subject you must not have any pancreatic uh, disorder i'm not talking about uh, functional pancreatic disorder like a diabetes but if there is any anomaly in the pancreas or surrounding areas then you should have a clearance from your doctor and then only you can do the uh, yoga asanas otherwise general pranayam anulom vilom and shavasana to relax your uh, body is very good because you know uh, stress is very uh, common factor for uh, being a diabetic many patients who are highly stressed they don't have any family history their uh, lifestyle is very good except the stress level for your work and their uh, personal stress is high they become diabetic so stress uh, plays a very important role which can be uh, taken care by yoga anulom vilom is one one of them and the shavasana these are the best things seren has asked can we use elliptical definitely you can use uh, elliptical it will uh, not affect the knees as much but i would rather uh, prefer you can go for a cross trainer because cross trainer doesn't have any impact on the knees mobility is there elliptical uh, if you are using a elliptical it has a same impact but it will only give you a benefit for your knees uh, mobility except your uh, cardio if you go, go for a cross trainer the benefit for mobility as well as your cardio exercise will be covered how many minutes uh, we should uh, do and intensity definitely it all depends on your uh, body structure if you have uh, bmi more than 27 uh, preferably we say more than 30 uh, bmi you should be doing it a uh, moderate don't be more intense or if you have any arthritic uh, knees then you should be doing in moderate timing should be you, if you are using a elliptical 15 minutes of uh, straight then make a, a slow down speed don't stop slow down the speed and uh, for 2 minutes again then you can take it the same way similar way you can use a cross trainer this will help to do an exercise get the benefit without damaging uh, your body uh, further uh, i think there is one more question yeah 
there is one more question which we received an email uh, the gentleman is asking he is suffering from diabetes and he is taking insulin twice a day is it safe for him to do an exercise and what exercise you uh, he should do the answer will be very simple like professor has already mentioned if you are on medication especially if you are on insulin before doing an exercise you should be taking some snacks so that your insulin level is good and you should be keeping handy a uh, fruit juice i'm not uh, saying to eat a fruit i'm just uh, suggesting to have handy a uh, fruit juice so that if you uh, feel any discomfort after the exercise or during the exercise you can take it to balance it and uh, try to avoid taking insulin before doing an exercise after the exercise you can do or if you have a full meal and uh, then you are taking insulin then make a gap of at least half an hour then you do exercise because immediately after that uh, taking insulin your sugar level will drop so that will be a concern thing but always be uh, having a small snacks before doing an exercise i think these are the questions we have already taken and other email questions have been also are answered well uh dr nitya you can take it forward yeah thank you dr velko thanks for answering all the questions thanks for your time and it was a very informative uh, webinar educating all of us on the diabetes importance of exercise for especially diabetic patient i'm sure the participants here would inculcate and absorb these information shared by professor and use in their day to day Uh, life and activities so thank you thank you dr velku professor and all the support team for organizing this webinar thank you once again and we meet in the next webinar which is next week uh, the next topic for diabetes eye care and retinopathy which will be dr mohit jain thank you so much thank you dr nitya thank you everyone for participating thank you so much